Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at a graph of f prime and answer some questions about f double prime and, and see if we can figure out what f is doing. I've got a graph of f prime, and of course I'm going to label this once, twice, three times. So I can say, brain, you're looking at f prime. And the first question says, for what values of x is the graph of f increasing? So first of all, I'm going to tell my brain, my answer needs to be an interval because it says values of x. I either need to list these values or I need to have an interval. Also, for f to be increasing, this means I need f prime to be positive. That means above the x-axis. I'm really working on my justification as I'm annotating the question. So f is increasing anywhere f prime is above, and it looks like to me that that happens on the interval from negative 3 to negative 2, unioned with 0 to 2, and then unioned with 2 to 3. I'm not going to actually include the point 2 because I'm saying f prime needs to be positive. So I will say that f is increasing on these intervals, and I'm going to say because why? I've got my annotation right here. This tells me why. This is my justification. Because f prime is positive. All right, part B asks, for what values of x does the graph of f have a relative maximum? Now, for f to have a relative maximum, this means that I need f prime to go from positive to negative. That means from above the x-axis to below. And also, my values of x for max and mins, they're going to be like little critical points my answer has to be x equals a number. So let's see. Up here it looks like there's only one place where f prime crosses from above the x-axis to below and that happens at negative 2. So I'll say that f has a relative maximum at x equals negative 2. I hope you can, can you see the negative there okay? I hope so. Because f prime goes from positive to negative. Plus 2 minus. By the way, we're recording this live. My kids are being really quiet, but we're recording this live. Um, all right, the next one is, for what values of x is the graph of f concave down? My answer here has to be in an interval notation. f to be concave down, there's actually two ways to tell this. I could have f prime decreasing, or I can have f double prime negative. Since I have the graph of f prime, I'm going to look and see where f prime is decreasing. So I'm going to say f is concave down. I'm going to do cd for that. f is concave down on the interval where, wherever f is decrease. I'm sorry, where f prime is decreasing. That happens from negative three to negative one, unioned with um, what does it look like up there? From one to two. Okay. Christian agrees with me. <laughs> so we've got because um, I wrote that f prime is decreasing on those intervals. f prime is decreasing. DEC is good enough for decreasing. And I hope you can see that f prime there. All right, so we're going on here. For what values of x does the graph of f have an inflection point? My answer is going to be x equals some number. That's what my answer is going to look like. At an inflection point, I need f prime to go from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing, either way. Another definition is f double prime is going to change sign. But I prefer my f prime definition because that's what I'm looking at. So let's scooch back up here for the graph, or to the graph. And yes, scooch is a cool little word. It looks like that we change direction from decreasing to increasing right here at negative 1 and also from increasing to decreasing at 1, and then from decreasing to increasing at 2. F prime changes its direction three times. So those three x values will be points of inflection to the curve, and that's where the curve is going to change its concavity. So F has a point of inflection at x equals negative 1, 1, and 2. And I'm going to say because, now I have... <coughs> Sorry, I have it on good authority that I cannot say because f prime changes direction. For some reason, College Board wants me to say f prime changes from increasing to decreasing. So the best answer here would be f prime changes, and I'm going to be out of room. 
I would really need to say, I'm only going to say one of these, but you would need to say all three. So I'm going to say the one for negative one. At negative one, let me go back up there and make sure I knew what it did. Yeah, it changed from decreasing to increasing because F prime changes from decreasing to increasing at negative one. And you would need to say something about at negative two and, I'm sorry, at positive one. And you'd also need to say something about at two. The same kind of argument, but these just flippy floppy. I ran out of room, but I think you get my gist here. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm now going to graph f from this information and from this y value, f of negative 3 equals 0. Now, from all of this information up here, we know that from negative 3 to negative 2, we have to be increasing and concave down. I say that because f prime is positive, so that means f is increasing. But since f prime is decreasing, that means concave down. So you can collect all this together. We need to be increasing and concave down until we get to negative 2. And then at that point, from negative 2 to negative 1, I need to be decreasing and still concave down. But at negative 1, I have a point of inflection, which means I change my concavity. Sorry about the bell there. So I'm going to change to concave up, but still decreasing. And then from 0 to 1, I'm still concave up, but now I'm increasing. And then at 1, I'm changing my inflection again from concave up to concave down, but still increasing. And then at 2, I'm changing my inflection again from concave down to concave up. And I know I did that rather quickly, but all of that information is up here. And let's just make sure we've got the appropriate information. At negative 2, do we have a relative maximum? Yes. Are we concave down from negative 3 to negative 1? Yes. Are we concave down from 1 to 2? Yes. Um, do we have a point of inflection at negative 1, 1, and 2? So this is a graph that collects all of that information together. So uh, we're going to practice this for a couple of days, and I will see you guys tomorrow.